Brent. Thank you, John. Good morning, y'all. Uh, my name is Sarah. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I'm the pastor here at Old West Church, and I'm glad you're here with us. Um, today is Sunday, surprise, um, but it's also um, Anna Brooks' last Sunday preaching with us for a while, which is really exciting for her. Um, she's actually beginning uh, her new appointment in Methodist Church in Tallahassee, and she'll be the first female preacher there in like 30 years. Um, so I'm just so excited and thrilled and excited that she's been spending one of her last Sundays in Boston here with us, uh, which is such a gift. So um, I did tell her that I intentionally wore clothes that I knew she wasn't going to wear because we tend to uh, match a lot, but we still coordinated, so that seems just to be uh, the spirit of our like uh, a kinship. So I'm so excited that she'll be bringing our Mother's Day sermon. Um, and so we're just glad you're here and gathering with us. Just a few announcements for us. Where is it? Um, first thing is on Mondays, we have Monday night dinner. Um, pretty easy to remember, it's in the name. So at five o'clock, we start serving uh, food. And if you're hungry, you're welcome to come and eat. And if you'd like to help serve, you're welcome to come and help serve. We're done by seven. So it's very easy. It's as much time as you want to commit. Um, you're welcome to come hang out, just have a hot meal, um, do whatever you want. And then, on Saturdays, we have Food Force Work Days. These are from 10 to noon. Sometimes there's special events scheduled during that, um, like special trainings or stuff like that. And so to keep more like involved in a, like the rest of what's happening, let me know. We can add you to the Food Forest with the email, uh, which is separate than our Friday with the email. Um, Friday with the email is kind of like the whole stuff going on. Food Forest is specific Food Forest. Um, so if you'd like to be on those, let me know and I can make sure, that, or tell Kate and she'll tell me since she's a forget things. Okay, I think that's it in terms of announcements. Again, I just want to say welcome. Whoever you are, uh, however you're showing up, whether you're in person or online, whatever you believe or don't believe, whatever you're struggling with, you're fully welcome in this space and you're fully welcome to participate. Um, and so one of the ways that we invite participation is often a call and response you'll see throughout the service. And so whoever has the mic um, does the italics and you are invited as a community to respond with the poll. So I invite you to join me to the call worship. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God made a way out of no way, calling us forth into liberation. We are called into this new way, resurrected reality. We are called for such a time as this. Hallelujah! 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 Our first song is Ever Be. So I invite you to sing and sing out.
Okay, and I ask you to join me in the response of greeting. Uh, I will read the italics and I ask you to join in with the bold face. All you nations, bless our God. Let the sound of his praise be heard. God preserved us among the living. They didn't, didn't let our feet slip away. But you, God, have tested us. You've refined us like silver. Trapped us, us in a net. Laid burdens on our backs. Let other people run right over our heads. We've been through fire and water, but you brought us out of freedom. So, so I'll tell you your house with entirely burned offerings. I'll keep, keep the promises, promises I made to you. The ones my lips uttered, the ones my mouth spoke when I was in deep trouble. I will offer the best burned offerings to you, along with the smoke of sacrificed rams. I will offer both bulls and goats. So Come close and listen, all you who honor God. I will tell you what God has done for me. My soul cried out to him with praise on my heart. If I had cherished evil in my heart, my Lord would not have listened. But God definitely listened. They heard the sound of my prayer. Bless God, they didn't reject my prayer. They didn't withhold their faithful love from me. Scripture today comes from John, um, John 14, 15 through 21. So I invite you to, um, you know, read along with me. And um, I'm using the Common English Bible, but you're welcome to use any really translation you want. Um, and if you ever want to get nerdy about why I use Common English and not another translation, ask me. Not right now. And I'm happy to tell you why I this is my favorite translation so far. You know, things are always improving. So, all right, John 14, 15 through 21. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. I will ask the divine parent, and they will send another companion who will be with you forever. This companion is the spirit of truth, who the world can't receive because it neither sees them nor recognizes them. But you know them because they live in you and will be with you. I won't leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Soon the world will no longer witness me, but you will, because I live you will live too. On that day, you will know that I am the divine, I am in the divine parent. You are in me as I am in you. Whoever keeps my commandments and keeps them loves me. Whoever loves me will be loved by my divine parent, and I will love them and will reveal myself to them. to graduate from Boston University School of Geography <laughs> this Saturday. Um, but I did my contextual education here at Old West during my second year, and I just want to take this opportunity to really thank you all for becoming a, a home for me during my time in Boston. Uh, I cannot begin to express how each and every person that I have met here at Old West has helped shape me and prepare me for ministry. And I just, now that I have a microphone, I just wanted to <laughs> thank you guys as much as I can to say you guys have really made me feel welcome here, made me feel loved here in Boston, and again, have prepared me for ministry in ways that I was not expecting. Um, so I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for that. Uh, and now it's time, I guess, for a sermon. Um, happy Mother's Day, everybody. Uh, and the Common English Translation, which we use today, this passage, you know, they sometimes give little titles to the snippet of scripture, and this title is, um, I Won't Leave You as Orphans, which I think is one of the most appropriate texts that we could have for Mother's Day. And before we dive into this, I just want to take a moment to talk about what a mother is. For some of us, Mother's Day can be a great day of celebration for a the the most favorite of, our, of the women in our lives. But for a lot of us, it can also be a really hard day as well. The term mother comes with complicated connotations, 
complicated memories and complicated feelings. So while this text used divine parent, today I want us to really embrace mother. And I want us to remember as we read this text that God does have a mothering love and that you do not have to be a traditional mother in order to encompass this love. So today, let's make sure that we spend the day celebrating all of the women in our lives and all of the people in our lives who have shown us God's love and his grace and all the women and the people who have become mother figures to us. The first part of the text is filled with hope. It reminds us and it reminds the disciples that God will be with them forever. God will first appear before them in Jesus, but later, as we know the story, once Jesus goes back up into heaven, God is going to be there in the form of the spirit of truth. And this is a great reminder to us on Mother's Day, because just as a mother's love is always present, even when we can't see it, God's love is always present. And we can take comfort in knowing that God is always there, even when we can't see her. But as I was preparing for this sermon today, the second part of the text was really the one that was speaking to me, which I think is really interesting because it can kind of seem like a downer uh, after the upbeat gifts of the, the spirit of truth that we get in the first one. It says, I will not leave you as orphans. Soon the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Be because I live, you will live too. On that day, you will know that I am in my divine parent, you are with me, and I am with you. So there's definitely a little bit of distance there, that Jesus is not going to be with the disciples physically anymore. But we also know that just because he's gone doesn't mean that God is gone, that we are all still there together. Recently, I was asked how I experience God in my life and how I feel God's love. And as I was reading this text, I was reminded once again that without question, I experience God as a mother, especially through the way that my grandmother loved my family and I. About two years ago, my grandmother passed away after a battle with ovarian cancer. She was in remission and she was re-diagnosed and she decided not to go through chemotherapy treatments again. Um, because they were difficult for her the first time. And with the doctor's diagnosis, she just decided that if she was going to go, she was going to go out in her own and best way possible. I absolutely respected her decision, even though it was really, really hard for me to embrace the reality of what her decision meant. The cancer worked a lot faster than doctors were anticipating, and she passed away about four months after her diagnosis. But in her final weeks, though, my grandmother, even though she was the one with cancer, was the one who took care of me. On her birthday, I called her, and in her own subtle way, she spent her last birthday letting me know that I was going to be okay once she had passed. And the last time that I saw her, about a week before she, she passed away, she couldn't sit up for more than a few minutes without feeling sick. But our last afternoon together, before I left to come on a plane back to Boston, well, I went to go visit her in Alabama. She sat on the couch with my cousin and I, and she was laughing, she was telling us stories. She, we were playing pranks on my mom, which you guys don't know my grandmother, but she was not a prankster. And she was absolutely hysterical leading up into her final few months. After I left, my Aunt Nana really couldn't get out of bed unless it was to eat or to bathe. I now know how uncomfortable staying on that couch for several hours was for her and how much it cost her. But she wanted to make sure that my last memories with her were ones that were filled with normalcy and with joy and with laughter. My memories of my grandmother are not weighed down by the thought of cancer, but they consist of her laughing and of her skipping around the room on her birthday a few years before while we were all chanting, skip around the room, skip around the room. I can still feel her holding my hand. She used to hold all of her grandkids' hands and she would just sit there and pat it. 
And it was almost like the way you would hold like birth a baby. She would just sit there and do that. Here I was, 24 years old, and she's just sitting there patting my hand. I know without a doubt that my last few months with my grandmother were some of the most selfless expressions of love that I have ever been given. And it is in that selflessness that I experience God's love the most. I know that God loves because I have felt it in the hugs that my grandmother gave me. And I pray that every single person on this earth experiences a selfless love like this. And I hope that we can all use today's Mother's Day to celebrate those people in our lives who have shown us this kind of love. God has revealed herself to us through the love of every single person that we consider a mom, whether that be the actions that we give to others, embodying this mothering love, or whether we accept that love from other people. So on this beautiful, gorgeous Mother's Day morning, I say let's all celebrate together and continue to work towards sharing that mothering love of God. One that is always present, that is always selfless, and is always ready to be there no matter how challenging life becomes. Let's all be mothers when it comes to love. Amen. <laughs>
And so we have a way that you can give online. And so that is, um, if you scan the QR code, the teal QR code behind the community elements, you'll find not only an online giving platform, but I think actually more importantly, our prayer request. Prayer request platform. Just just change that word because the R's next to each other are really hard for me. Prayer request platform. And um, there you're invited to you know, grab your phone and then submit your prayer requests, whatever they are, um, there, and so we'll read those out loud later in the service. It's completely anonymous, and so you're invited to pray and pray boldly. Um, during this time, friends and John will lead us in song, and you're invited to move around the space to engage. Um, and then after that, we'll sing another song, and you, you don't have to be done. You can keep doing whatever you're doing. But we invite you to move and to engage and to reflect. Welcome to Open Space. And so you're welcome to keep doing whatever you're doing, but I do invite you to sing and sing out. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true.
as she faithfully navigates and leads with tenacity, vision, fears, love, and grace, binding us close across geographies, generations, identities, and through live experiences in the midst. Together, we will tra be transformed for God. Hear our prayer. Continue prayers for healing, strength, and guidance for my sister Donna and your host of humble servants. May they feel your unconditional love, Lord. God. Hear our prayer. May Terry's loved ones feel your binding love and healing each with each step, faithfully and lovingly taking her on her walk closer to you. May Terry feel the fearlessness of love as we let go of this earthly connection. And you, our Lord, welcome her home. God, hear our prayer. Thank you, Lord, for this brand new day. May this gift warm our hearts and brighten our paths with unbridled faith, radical imagination, inspiration, and love throughout the coming week. Prayer. Continue prayers for my brother Jimmy and my family as we journey through life without you. God, hear our prayer. Prayers for all mothers and mother figures. Prayers for all who find today a tough day. Prayers for all who miss their mother. God, hear our prayer. Bring an end to all systems of oppression and institutions of injustice. God, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all the mothering figures in our lives, for all the saints and all the souls who have cared for us and carved out spaces that are brave and bold, just as they are. Uh, we are Gratitude for Anna Brooke. Um, you are truly a person. Uh, uh, Celebrating all the new mothers, Camille and Catherine. Uh, uh, we are Guide us into new ways of being and into broader imaginings as we seek to live in our core values and save our community with boldness, justice, love, and hope. God, hear our prayer. Keep the brain safe and mentally and physically well while on earth and land. God, God, hear our prayer. Let's pray. Amantísimo Padre Celestial, en esta hermosa mañana te damos gratitud por todas las madres. Las que han ido contigo, Señor, al cielo y las que aún hoy están aquí batallando junto a sus hijos para levantarnos, Señor, a esos caminos que tú les has emprendido. Gracias te damos por ellas. Gracias te damos por aquellas madres que hoy siguen batallando oraciones y levantando clamor a ti para, Señor, que tú los cubras a sus hijos, para que tú ayudes a sus hijos a mantenerse en un camino fiel a ti, Señor. Aquellas madres que no saben de sus hijos hoy, sé tu Señor trayendo esos hijos nuevamente a los corazones de esas madres desesperadas por saber de ellos. Sabemos que tú los cubres, Señor, sabemos que tú los proteges. Gracias te damos por esta iglesia, por esta pastora, Señor, que emprende unos caminos nuevos y que nos lleva a una transformación. Ayúdanos, Señor, en el camino que tenemos adelante. Y ayúdanos, Señor, a tomar la decisión que sea beneficiosa, Señor, no para nosotros, pero para tu obra. Gracias, Señor, porque sabemos que tú nos guías, sabemos que tú nos ayudas a discernir la información. Ayúdanos, Señor, a tomar la mejor decisión. Y en esta mañana gloriosa, en esta ciudad, que una vez más necesita de ti, necesita de tu camino, necesita de tu gloria y de tu gracia. Te ponemos en tus manos esta ciudad. Te ponemos en tus manos esta iglesia y te ponemos en tus manos a todas estas madres que aquí nos hemos estado conglomerando contigo, Señor, y dando tu corazón, Señor, para que tú nos sigas enseñando lo que es el amor de una madre. Hemos orado en esta mañana en el santo nombre de tu Hijo Jesús. Amén. <coughs> I already said that these aren't built for these, uh, they're not built for your dresses, so here we are. Communion is the culmination of every service. It is um, what shapes us um, as a body. Um, it tells us who we are, um, um, and it also tells us who we can become. And so we partake in communion every week. 
and on West. And so I, of course, invite you to join me in this liturgy um, and in partaking in communion, uh, however you would like. But I invite you to join me. Um, I'll read the italics. Of course, you're invited to respond to the whole. We cry out to our Creator, come to us quickly. Listen to our voice when we cry out to you. Let our prayers come before you like incense. Let our uplifted hearts be like an offering. Our hopes are in you, our Redeemer. We take refuge in you, our Savior. Creator of wonders and searchers, redeemer of dreamers and skeptics, sustainer of doubters and seekers, just as your presence surrounds and sustains each of us, ever failing, ever faithful, so your praises may never cease. All of creation celebrates this your steadfast goodness. We add our voices to the host of heaven's ceaseless praise, joining their unending song, saying, Santo, 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 mi corazón te adora, mi corazón te sabe Santo eres Dios. You are holy, holy God, holy one, holy three, and just as those songs, they never cease, neither does your love for us. It's as constant as the sun rising in the east. But because of this love, and your vision for what the world was meant to be, you sent your child to dwell with us, to be in the midst, you named them, Emmanuel, God with us. You sent your child to teach us how to love, and how to be loved in return, how to become beloved community, go create your kingdom. The night your child was falsely accused, arrested, and executed by a militarized empire state, it took time. Knowing what was to come, Jesus took time. Create community, to teach love, and to show that the path of peace is always possible, even in the face of empire. That night, Jesus took some of his community, and he gathered them around a very simple table for a very simple meal. That night, he took some bread and blessed it, and gave it to those gathered saying, Take, eat, and remember me. The meal was over, Jesus took a cup and said, As often as you drink this, remember me. You remember. We find ourselves in need of the creative power of God's kingdom, the redeeming love of Christ's community, and the sustaining empowerment of the Holy Spirit. So we remind ourselves of this by proclaiming the mystery of our faith. Christ, Christ who died, died our risen, and will come again. We wait your kingdom of honor, for your peace and justice will reign. Now is the point of the service. So this is called the Epiclesis. And this is a very fancy church word that simply means the blessing of the bread and the grape juice, or the crackers and the grape juice, or a muffin and the tea. And often it's the minister that does this, the priest or the pastor who presides over communion, who raises their hands in blessing and invites the Holy Spirit down to be in these things to remind us of who we are. But on West, we practice this a little differently. We believe really fully in the idea of the body of Christ, that each and every one of us has different gifts, different graces, different talents, which we have been given we go into the world, and by just being ourselves, by living into these truths of our talents and gifts, we are serving the world, we're ministering to it. This helps us understand the priesthood of all believers. So it's not just us who've gone to Jesus' school, uh, or those who've been ordained, but it's all persons. All bodies are a part of the body of Christ and make up this priesthood. So we invite all persons to raise their hearts and their hands and bless the elements together. So I invite you to join me. Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer of all, you are here, always with us, always loving us. Inviting us into true communion with you and with your creation to form that most beloved community. We challenge us to leave behind systems of oppression that we have been afraid from and we have created. You empower us to be your body and co create your kingdom to live with you. And you inspire us with your spirit to dream new dreams for all of us. So we ask in the boldness you taught us to send your spirit once again on us and on these gifts before us. May this bread be like your heart broken for the world. This cup be like your love poured out for the community of the nations. May these gifts before us nourish us with grace and hope and with boldness. That we pray, keep us hungry. Keep us hungry for the work until your kingdom come, your will be done for all of your creation. We pray this as your children, your beloved ones. Continue to teach us, feed us, inspire, and guide us, and bring us into glory. 
And in the spirit of our sibling Christ, we are bold to pray these words. Eternal spirit, earth maker, pain bearer, life giver, source of all that is and that shall be, loving and heart of soul, loving God in whom is heaven, the hallowing of your name echoed through the universe, the way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. To the bread we need for today, feed us. In the words we absorb for one another, forgive us. In times of temptation, test and strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. In great and glory, power and love, now and forever. I invite you to take your home, take what you've got here, take your resume, and break these off. This is called a fraction, um, and you're basically holding a smaller bit of what's a larger bowl. This is to remind you that you are a small bit of the body of Christ, which kind of sounds like mean or derogatory, but it's not, right? It's sick. It's not just me. I'm not alone in this, but I am a small part of a much larger body. Of a great how of witnesses of people, saints, and souls who belong for us, and also a whole community here along the way. So we do this work not in isolation and not alone, but we do this where all of our strengths are magnified and we go at it together. So I invite you now to serve yourself, to know that you are loved, you are called, and you are called to love. Our final song is Draw the Circle Wide, which is so wonderful. One of my favorite like, kind of concepts of justice, of the work of justice, is there's not a space at the table, we make a bigger table. Um, and so for me, the idea of drawing the circle wide in terms of the church is that ever widening impact like ripples of a pond of the work of justice and mercy. So I invite you to sing and sing out, Draw the Circle Wide. Right then we'll receive our benediction.
our benediction practice here at Old West. You'll notice that there are three hallelujahs there at the end. The first hallelujah is for ourselves, knowing that we cannot go out in the world and do God's work of justice and mercy unless we ourselves are sustained. The second hallelujah, we're going to say that one just a little bit louder, that is for your community, however you think of that, whether that be your family, your church community, school, work, what have you. You say it just a little bit louder, extending that prayer to that community. And then the last hallelujah is the loudest of all. If JJ were here, he <laughs> would be the loudest of us all, absolutely screaming that. But that is the energy that this last hallelujah brings. And that hallelujah is for the world, knowing that we are all a part of God's creation and that we are all in this together. And so I invite you to join me now in the benediction. Once more, I will read the italics and I invite you to join me in the bold. Go forth, Easter people. Teach us to be kingdom bringers, to be grace, to be justice, to be love for all we need. We go forth in hope, we go forth in justice. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.